Hey everyone, it's Matt. What we're going to do in this video is go through a summary of hypothesis testing. So this summary sheet here can be used as a resource. It has a lot of information on it. All we're going to do today is go through sort of one big example. We'll walk through the steps once with the idea that we'll go through more examples and more details about this in class. So this video is just to give you a taste of hypothesis testing and to see just one big example. In hypothesis testing, the whole idea is it's a method to try to make decisions using the sample data that you have, usually decisions about the entire population. Now, this is a formal procedure, uh, and so this is why we're going to be following uh, these eight regimented steps. So uh, we're going to skip a lot of this sheet today, and we'll just get to see uh, each of the steps in one example. So the first step, step one, is to determine the claim. So there's uh, many examples of claims. There's a few uh, examples here. We're going to focus uh, exclusively in this video on the second. So let's think about this one here. So you might claim that the mean age of a BCIT full-time student is 22 years. Uh, in other words, mu for the population mean equals 22 years. This might or might not be true, but this is a claim that we might have. And hypothesis testing will help us uh, either support or reject this claim. So we'll work with this one here. Maybe to put this in context, let's say we did some sampling. So let's say we randomly picked a number of students. Maybe n equals 100. And maybe after doing that sample, we can come up with a sample mean x bar. Say we get 24.2 years for x bar with a sample standard deviation of 3.2 years. So based on our sample, we got a mean of 24.2 years. We would like to use this information from our sample to address the claim that the population mean uh, mu is 22 years. So that's step one. We've established our claim. Uh, for step two, let's construct the null and alternative hypothesis. So let's go ahead and think about what this is. So uh, the null hypothesis, uh, or working hypothesis, is uh, something in terms of equality that we're going to assume is true for the example. So here, we can take uh, H0, our null hypothesis, to be mu equals 22 in years. Uh, that's our null hypothesis H0. The alternative is uh, HA, sometimes also written H1. Uh, this is the alternative we're considering to the hypothesis. So in this example, uh, we'll say either mu is 22 or mu is not. Uh, it's also important at this stage to denote uh, which was our original claim. It could be either. In this case, we happen to be claiming H0. Uh, I should mention again, H0 is always going to evolve, involve an equality. Uh, that's because of the way that the test is uh, constructed. It allows us to test claims uh, of the form mu equals something. Now, there's lots of examples about uh, null and alter alternative hypotheses. We'll have a chance to do lots of these in class. Let's move now to step three. Uh, the idea here being to set the significance of the test or to set alpha. Uh, this will determine the probability of rejecting uh, the null hypothesis when it's actually true, something called a type one error. We'll talk more about type one errors in class, but for now, let's content ourselves to pick alpha equals 0 0.05. This is the most common. Uh, this is the one we'll use unless otherwise stated. So we've had a chance to play with different alphas doing confidence intervals. Uh, this is the same alpha. It will be a similar idea. So let's skip a little bit here. 
and think now about step four. I often do step four and five together. So we're going to uh, check the assumptions of the test in step four, and step five, we're going to calculate the test statistic. So for us, in this case, we are using a large population. Our n is bigger than 30. But we don't have the true population standard deviation. We only have the sample standard deviation. So based on what we've learned so far, we're thinking of having some kind of t-test. Uh, there will be a number of different test statistics that we'll use in a lot of different cases. Uh, I think we'll have maybe up to eight. A few of them are listed down below. Uh, the Z and T here we have not seen, but we should be happy to see our familiar T statistic here. So we can calculate uh, for one population mean where sigma is unknown but S is known, uh, that is the case, and we have a large enough N. So our N here is 100, that's big enough, so we don't need the population uh, necessarily to be normal. And since we're doing a t-test, we're going to consider the degrees of freedom. Uh, sorry, that's not 199, that's just 99, our dimension minus 1. Uh, so this is good. This is the correct test statistic to use, and all of our assumptions are okay. So we can go ahead and try and calculate this. So we have our familiar formula for the t statistic, x bar minus mu over s over square root of n. We can plug the numbers in that we have. 24.2 was our sample mean. In for the mu here, We'll go the oops, we'll go the assumption for H0. So this here is for H0. The idea is throughout the test, we're assuming that the null hypothesis is true and seeing how probable that result is, whether or not uh, it checks out. So we're going to assume it's true until proven otherwise. And we can plug in the other numbers here. One can compute this to get the t statistic. Uh, it's looking pretty big, 6.875 or thereabouts. And now we can take this t statistic and move to the next step. So in step six, uh, there are two ways to do it. One is to de determine the rejection region, or you can determine a p-value. Uh, the first is the traditional method. So there's the traditional method and there's the p-value method. In this video, we're going to follow the traditional method, but in class, we'll do both. P-value is a little more uh, popular uh, presently. Traditional is, well, more traditional. There is a decision to make here in terms of whether we're left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed. We'll talk more about what that means in class and go through examples of each. I'll tell you just now that the example we're working with here is two-tailed. So don't worry so much about that. We'll get into this a little bit later. But for now, let's come down and investigate this picture right here. So here is our familiar either Z or T curve. And what we've plotted here are different regions for failing to reject the null and rejecting the null. Let's proceed in the same way that we did when we were thinking about confidence intervals. We have a particular alpha here. Uh, alpha is 0.05 or 5%. Our alpha over 2 is going to be 2.5%. You can imagine, uh, as we were doing in confidence intervals, trying to find our t alpha over 2. We can do that in R using the QT function, uh, plugging in 97.5% with 99 degrees of freedom, n is 100 here. If you compute that out, you're going to get a T alpha over 2 of about 1.98. So what we've done so far is to determine this critical t alpha over 2 value. So in this example, we're working with t and not z. So here is 1.984. And over here is the negative. 
negative 1.984. So this area in the middle is the rejection, uh, the failure to reject region, and these areas out here on the tails are the two rejection regions. So the idea is, if our t value is not so big, it's uh, maybe not uh, so far off of our claim, and we will fall in the middle region here, it will not be particularly unlikely for this result to happen, and so we will not be able to reject the null hypothesis. On the other hand, if our t value is very extreme, then we will think that the probability of the null hypothesis being true is very small, and we will fall in one of these rejection regions, then we will be able to reject the null hypothesis and declare uh, some evidence uh, that we don't believe it's true. So let's uh, turn our attention now back to our problem. We've computed our t statistic and we have established our rejection region. Uh, the next step here is to make a decision. So let's use the information we've established so far. Uh, let's bring the picture back and record some of what we have. So here is the norm, uh, t curve. So based on our 95% uh, using alpha of 0 0.5, we've established our rejection regions. So out here and out here, we're rejecting. Whereas on the inside, right here, is our fail to reject. And anywhere to the right of this and to the left of this point, we can reject. Reject. OK, uh, let's bring back the t that we computed. So our test statistic, in this case a t statistic that we computed, was quite large. t was uh, 6.875. This is in the rejection region. It's in the rejection region. Uh, it's actually pretty far out, as you can see from this picture here. So in this case, we can reject the null hypothesis. So what we've done is to say, let's hypothesize that the mean age of the BCIT students overall in the population is 22 years. Based on our sample, we've amassed some evidence that indicates, uh, based on this range of probable values, uh, that that is in fact not the case. So what we can say now is that we uh, have amassed a bunch of evidence uh, that warrants the rejection of the null here. Uh, finally, we can make some kind of conclusion and make a statement in terms of the original claim. So let's recall here that H naught, mu being 22, that was the original claim. Uh, we will need to know what the original claim was. Uh, in this case, it was the null hypothesis. And in this case, we are rejecting the null hypothesis hypothesis. So uh, this handy table here gives us some help about how to word different conclusions. Uh, in this case, we our claim, we had that our claim was H naught and we were able to reject H naught. And so let's follow this wording here. Uh, we can use the different wordings and the different examples we'll do later. But for now, uh, let's write this up here. Uh, so. In this case, there is sufficient evidence uh, to warrant the rejection of the claim. Uh, in this case, the claim was about the mean age. Uh, mean age is 22 years.
Okay, so there's sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that the mean age is 22 years. So that's our summary here. So as I say, we'll get a lot of chance to play with this in class. There is a small D2L quiz, so go ahead and do that. Uh, the important thing here was to just go through one big example and see all of the steps. The idea being that first we make some kind of claim. What is it uh, that we're interested in here? We then construct the null and alternative hypothesis, step two. Step three, we set a significance level. Default alpha equals 0 0.05. We determine in step four and five, what's the test statistic and are you allowed to use that test statistic? Is it appropriate? In step six, we find a rejection region. Uh, seven, we make a decision, either reject or fail to reject. And finally, we make some conclusion here in step eight uh, using this precise wording. That's all we've got for now. We'll see you in class.